um, recording the general footage so that we can get all of this hooked up and everything. Um, yeah, the organization of BGN is actually really good. Um, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of good work this year and we're teaming up with my current place of employment called DreamYard. We are, uh, we're going to do a lot of really good work. We're going to create a lot of, you know, cool content creators in the Bronx, focusing around the Bronx and just making sure that, you know, part of my, the organization that I work for, part of our mission is to help, uh, not to help people of color. We don't like using that term. We just like bring out the talent that is in the Bronx. And so. Um, the Bronx Gaming Network is going to do that from a gaming standpoint, and we're going to be doing a lot of work with the nonprofit organizations to do that as well. Um, yeah, honestly, it's very cool. It's very cool work, and I can't wait to announce like more things. We're definitely going to try to ramp up this year um, the stuff that we do. Uh, but right now, we're sort of in a little bit of a dormant, uh, dormant stage because we really want to... Uh, we really want to plan out what we're doing and be very conscious and purposeful of what it is that we do next year. Um, so yeah, that just a lot of cool stuff happening. Um, is there anything else that I need to announce before I continue? So I guess the only other thing is that these days, I, you know, I took a small break from streaming uh, for the beginning of the year. So this is actually my first stream of the new year. So happy new year, everyone. I hope the new year's treating you okay. I've just been kind of tired these days, so I'm just gonna, you know, like chill out with that. But yeah, like I, I really just hope that like everyone is doing really well this uh, this new year so far. Yeah, happy new year, Jay Cookie. Thank you so much. Um, I very recently, right before the year ended, I was actually recording footage for my PlayStation TV, which is right behind me, and I'll go get it actually. So uh, the PlayStation TV, if you don't have one, if you don't know what this is, this is actually a consoleized version of a PlayStation Vita. Um, so you can play digital PS1, PSP, and PlayStation, T and PlayStation Vita games on this, and it will uh, go directly out through HDMI. And you can use a DualShock, you know, you can use like a PS3 or PS4 controller with it. So. You know, you don't, you don't have to be glued down to your handheld to play it. I was actually recording footage for this and content for it because last year I was also contributing to the RetroTink 5X wiki to get like the ultimate picture out of this, out of the PlayStation TV. And I decided sometime today or yesterday that what I really want to focus on this year when it comes to streaming besides getting this sort of raw footage for YouTube clips and um, you know the, the 5X wiki is that I really want to put a dent in my backlog. And I have a bunch of like RPGs. Hey Spitzy! Everyone, Spitzy Speaks JP is a very amazing streamer. Say hi to Spitzy, everyone. Spitzy, welcome. Spitzy is a is a Jap... I, I, I don't know the exact term for it, but she streams Japanese games and... Uh, she streams games in Japanese and translates them as she goes. Um, and well, I don't study Japanese anymore. I can really, really appreciate someone who was taking the time to do so. And I don't know if you've taken your exam yet, Spitzy, but you are still working towards that, I'm hoping. So uh, definitely check her out. She was, like it says, she was most recently playing Hades, which is but not in Japanese, but she had been playing Kingdom Hearts. So if you want to see retro gaming, watch her play Kingdom Hearts for a little bit. But yeah, Spitzy, welcome to the stream. And even if you can't stay long, I'm just always happy that you're able to pop in. But yeah, watch Spitzy. She's awesome. Um, what was I saying? So there are games that I want to play on this, especially because there's a really big backlog of games that I have for this. Let me see if I can. Is this going to focus? No. I have to do it manually. There you go. There's that. And here I am. So, yeah, um, the three game I'm going to try to do three games in a row on this thing, and they're going to, if I do stream games, it'll be on this explicitly. And I don't know if I'm going to do it through the 5X yet, but it'll probably, it might be through the 5X. Um, the first game I'm going to play is 
um, Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together, which actually got re-released on pretty much every platform. But I'm going to play the PSP version of this. And then I will also play the PSP version of Persona. Um, never played that. I played three and four, and I have five, uh, like a sealed copy of five somewhere. And finally, um, I'm probably going to play Parasite Eve, the PS1 version on this, and, you know, just record general footage for that for, you know, five, you know, take 5X stuff. Because a lot of the things that I want to do is put out videos this year of optimizing or the best way to play certain types of games and using your consoles on that. And I really want to do that on my YouTube channel. Bitsy says, Daw. Spitzy, you don't need to be uh, bashful if I shout you out on my stream. You do a lot of really cool things. Uh, you, you know, you do a lot of cool, you do a lot of cool things, and you make it extremely entertaining. And I especially love watching you do the translation stuff in Japanese. You're just an overall cool person. So um, I don't know if you're still here, but like I said, Spitzy does good. Spitzy's really cool. Definitely give her a follow. Uh, Macros wants to know, while is excited for the PS for the Persona playthroughs, am I going to do Pro Persona 2 games on the PlayStation TV as well? Yes. So. PlayStation TV, and I don't know, I don't remember which one is first or which one is second, and I don't remember the, the names. So, I know there are two Persona 2 games and one Persona 1 game. The PSP version, the only real difference is that it's in widescreen, and, uh, you know, the PS1 version has Hitler in it, and in the, PS2, in the PSP version, they, like, take away his mustache or give him sunglasses or something to make it not Nazis. So, um, you know, it, it's slightly different, different translation, updated visuals, but I am definitely going to play the PSP version. The Persona 2 games, digitally on the PlayStation Network, there is one that is a PSP game and one that is a PS1 game. I will be playing both of them. I do have both of them and I will play both of them. Um, so yeah, I, I, have, uh, I have both. Like officially, I have them, and I funny. The funny thing is that like I I buy, or officially own every single game on this, but it is hacked. I don't know if you see. I have a flash drive in here so that I could put more storage into it. 128 gigabytes, and I'm kind of almost done with it after I installed everything. Funny enough, but there's a ton of games in here. Not all of them work, um, but we will we will find out if they work or not at some point. But. Today's stream is not about the PlayStation TV, just if you see me streaming games, it'll probably be one of those, th uh, it'll be those three for the rest of the year so far as the streaming plan, when I'm not just streaming for con to create content. Um, so that's Persona 1, sorry, in, in order, it's Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, Persona 1, and Parasite Eve. And I will be using the 5X, uh, the 5X Pro on this because even though this has HDMI out, I can use a uh, converter to give it to give this a signal that this can read to really make the image sh as sharp as possible. And I think I talked about that in my last stream, but I do want to I do want to play it that way. Um, but I think it, I think we're good when it comes to like general announcements. Um, at some point, like guys. You know, it'll say, follow me on my social media. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. Um, if you see me on Twitter, I'm probably just talking shit about Final Fantasy VIII because I hate that game. Um, Kurt will say I love it. I don't. It's just not true. Final Fantasy VIII is bad. Um, I will say, if, if you ever want me to say something nice about Final Fantasy VIII, it is officially that the best way to play Final Fantasy VIII is to turn it off listen to the spot listen to the soundtrack on spotify and play triple triad which is the card game in the game um play triple triad on your phone if you can those, those are the nicest things i'll say but enough final fantasy 8 slander we're here to play gamecube games we're here to play um yeah we're here to play gamecube games we're here to play some wii games and i am also going to be here to take as good as good screenshots as possible for all of these consoles other than that listen guys feel free to chime in at any point if you have any questions about like my setup or um uh, how i'm playing something please don't be afraid to chime in don't be shy i don't bite if you have nice things to say about final fantasy 8 that's not a problem i respect your incorrect opinion
Like, you know, it's all it's all good, and I love all I love all my friends. Okay, so um I do have to check in because the, the person who is working on the wiki did request specific games for me to play. Um, so for GameCube. Super Mario Sunshine and Zelda Wind Waker, which I have saves for that have gotten through certain things. So let's see what that looks like. Um, oh, I will need a GameCube. I was going to use this... Um, I was gonna use this controller. This is like a Super Nintendo style D-pad to be used for like Game Boy game, when you play Game Boy games on the GameCube. But um, because I'm gonna play Mario Sunshine, excuse me, I also kind of just ate lunch. I also, because I'm playing Mario Sunshine and Zelda, I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, I was just reading something on this Discord, but uh, playing Game Boy games on the on the GameCube is probably the best way to play Game Boy games. I do have a Game Boy player here, and it is very it's very good. But I don't know if you guys saw, I have every color. I have like other colors of GameCube. They're like right here, um, and I do have a matching Game Boy player for each of them, which is my only my only retro gaming flex. Um, everything else is pretty standard. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this GameCube controller so I can start playing. Um, yeah, and also grab the games too. Let's do that. Sorry about that. And so I'm going to be doing the, both the GameCube and the Wii today. So for the GameCube, I'm going to do some footage of Mario Sunshine and some for Wind Waker. And I've also been asked to do Twilight Princess and Mario Galaxy 2. And I, I haven't played either of those Wii games. Um, those are on the backlog for the, for the meantime. So um, just I'm going to have to start those games up and take some screenshots of like very early footage. Bitsy says, sounds like a bargain lineup. Oh my god. Well, yeah. Um, these are... Um, I hope she. I hope you... Oh, bang it. I have a bargain lineup. Yeah, a bangin' lineup. It's good. And I think that these are the games that were, you know, best... Uh, is this gonna focus? There you go. Uh, these are some of, like, the games that you'd expect to see on a GameCube and Wii. So um, we're going to do that. Oh, yeah. The other thing was we are going to look at the GameCube games on both the Wii and uh, the GameCube itself because um, it, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the GameCube scene. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to get, like, the utmost best quality picture from a GameCube, but um, it's not fun because... You have to buy a, these GameCube component cables, and those GameCube component cables are, in fact, $300. I'm not joking. GameCube component cables are $300. And so, um, no one wants to pay that. So, you have to find workarounds for that, including... Everything's blurry. Including um, the, this... Uh, HDMI adapter for the GameCube, which I use all the time. If you see me play Game Boy games, then that's what I've been doing. Um, so, let's 
got this HDMI cable out of my Switch. What have you guys been playing, by the way? Like, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Violet, and I've been getting into, um, like, ranking battles and casual battles in Pokemon Violet. It's been quite the trip. I'm really bad at Pokemon battles, apparently, but also Tyranitar is really bad in Pokemon battles. I don't get it myself. Um, let's see, is the game... The game is there. Let's see what this looks like. The game should be starting up any second now. You should have heard something. There we go, okay. So, the game shouldn't just look like that. Let me fix this. So it should actually look like this when it's minimized. Let's fix that. to be full size. Let's go ahead and reset this. So we're doing a lot of things manually today, especially because this is the stream. You're looking, you guys are seeing the uh, behind the scenes of me doing the stream. Welcome everyone. Um, oh, let me start Wind Waker actually so that I can, oh, I didn't put any disc in here. Smart. So again, like if th this will be this VOD will be up on my YouTube channel probably tomorrow if I can get it uploaded in time. But I do plan to use the footage for a condensed YouTube video. So let's start with Zelda. And we want to hold B so that we get this uh, progressive scan thing going. So yes. So let's see if this works correctly or not. say yes. Okay, perfect. So, let me see what this specific thing looks like, because it should be... guys aren't aware like this is what uh, this is like the sharpest possible video that you can get out of your GameCube I guess you want to like full screen it and this is like directly digital through the HDMI cable as well so that's like one of the reasons you want to do that the, the, the component cables are like $300 but this dongle I ended up getting for uh, maybe 60 because it was on sale comes with a cute little remote for me to work with. So let's see what this looks like. I do that, and I need to... Okay, yeah. Let's do the picture settings, not this one then. It's output. Allow 480p mode, yes. Cropped 480 no, that's not what I need. This doesn't do anything. So really the only thing you need to do at this point is, do we need to do fixed resolution? Let's find out. Okay, so it doesn't look like we need to do fixed resolution. 
Well, we don't need to do it, but it's here anyway for us to use. And yeah, that would have helped a little bit with the uh, with the capture, but that's fine. And we can start playing the game a little bit. I need to get like a good point to do this uh, capture. When you do, uh, so also this uh, this game was uh, has been played by my sister. Her name is Leslie, um, but her middle name is Josefina. So uh, Josefina and Leslie is her. Bob, I don't know who Bob is. It's probably also her. Uh, she has all three orbs, but no Triforce pieces, nothing. Oh, this game has been beaten. I probably this is probably my file that I beat under Leslie's name. Plus, she doesn't play video games. So at this point, I'm like, oof, that looks jaggy. I don't know about you guys, but this looks a little jaggy. Which is fine. It's still good. Like this still looks great, pop, for if you ask me. Um. What's a good place to go for... I guess I've also... I also just don't see red much in this game, but his boat is a little red, but... Interesting. Anyone remember this game? Anyone love playing this game? Songs. Oh, here it is. Ballad of Gales. Down, right, left, up. So this is what, like, that's what I was saying. This is what raw digital GameCube footage looks like. Um, this is... Like, this is as good as it's going to look on your TV, but what we're going to do is capture this, set up the Retro Tank 5X. Oh wow, I end up so far away from the town. Jeez. Let me actually set this to 4x3 on my... Thing as well. There you go. So you let me know how you think this looks. Do you think this looks good? As uh, sorry. So wait, that wasn't what I was going to say. Um, I just want to get a good scene of like what the game can look like. It's, well, what the game can look like with raw. And then I want to put it through the Tank 5X um, to get like a really good scale out of it, as well as getting a very good, uh, a very good picture out of it as well. So there's a lot of things that are going to go on. If you, um, like, just let me know how you think this looks, because honestly, I, if you ask me, I would say, I would tell you, oh, this is like as good as emulation. Why, I don't know why Link is like got his mouth open, but there that is. All right, I think that's as good as it gets for this picture. It gives wide. I, I think it gives quite a bit of detail. Do you think I should do some other some other scene? Should I, you know, make it like? over here instead. Actually, I like this one because it has more housing and stuff. So it'll like... It'll just show up. Alright. This sounds like a good time to take a picture of the source or of the... Uh... No, I'll just take a screenshot of this because this is what this looks like in 1080. Scaling up. This 
scale filtering disabled, so it should be like nearest neighbor or point at this point. Yeah, it shouldn't look any different. Well, this is just what this looks like scale. We're gonna stop here and you know, make sure I took a screenshot of that. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to set up the Retro Team 5X. Um, let's go ahead and do Use it with the Retro Tank 5X. We do also need to make sure that we connect this terrible little device here. This is a. Uh, I'll make the. I'll make this bigger. Guy. I'll make this really small. Basically, this takes HDMI and it outputs the component. Let's. Uh, this and camera control, camera control. There you go. Um, so there's there. It looks supposed to look like this. And the other thing we have to do is connect the component cables to it as well. Sorry for like the technical nature of this, but you know, again, this is like more behind the scenes stuff. Y'all are just here for the ride. Uh, all right, so this is already connected. This side of it to the tank 5x, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And the reason I have these uh, 90 degree connections, it's honestly just immensely easier for me to just have these. This cable is very taut and very tight. So when I connect this, it's just easier for me to have everything on the desk with these uh, with these 90 degree connections on it as well. Spitzy, you are amazing, Kombanwa. And thank you so much for coming through. I really, again, I really appreciate it. Um, like, yeah, like, I, I just really appreciate you being here. And I, I wish you the best. If you're streaming, are you streaming? Because if you're streaming, you get uh, first dibs for per raid. Here's what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna disconnect this HDMI dongle from the TV directly, and we are going to plug in the tank 5X. This is okay, so I plugged in. That's fine. Is this no, it's not. I need to deactivate this and everything. So like I said before, everyone, like if you are um Follow Spitzy. Spitzy's amazing. Spitzy does a lot of really cool things. Okay. Um, there's that. Let's go back here and put the game... I'm gonna put the game back here. Um, so the Retro Tank 5X, like I said, it will take pretty much any signal and output it and output it in 1080p. So you really want this for basically any console, any, any retro console. The GameCube, on the other hand, is um, a different beast altogether, specifically because um, like the GameCube is such an in-between console for Oh, I need to set the I need to set the input because I changed it recently. Oh, it should be there. Interesting. Oh, this the uh, the converter is not smart. We got this now. We got this now. Three, two, 
one. Here is Wind Waker, or not. There it is. It's coming, it's coming. There you go. That is a hilarious, uh, hilarious moment to catch the link at. Okay. So here's the thing for the Tink 5X. I do have to take a look at what this is. It should be 480p, however. It's in generic 16 by nine. Normally, you would wanna put it either in generic four by three or, yeah, generic four by three is fine. Generic 4x3 is fine, like it pretty much just takes the image and scales it. It should look sharper, although it should also look a little skinnier. No, it's fine, because the A button's a circle. This is also a, a joke from the retro gaming community that like certain things should be circular. So circles should look like circles, but sometimes, uh, sometimes the circles are not circles, sometimes they are ovals. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna try to center this image. So, but between five and 16, so that's 21 divided by two is about 10. So this is like pretty much where it's supposed to be in regards to cropping. Um, and it's not cropped anywhere else. So this is like generically the best image that you can get. Let's see if we can make this any better by coming in here. 480p mode is fine. Oh yeah, and I shouldn't be using the audio output from uh, the HDMI. I should be using the audio output from a different cable altogether. So I'm gonna be doing that in a second. Okay, no, not that one. Fix resolution, let's take a look at what that looks like. There's no difference when you fix resolution. It's either four by three or four by three. This is fine, this is everything we need. So let's go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Um, so here's what I was saying. When you play, uh, when you're playing this for whatever reason, the audio, doesn't come out exactly the way it should from my understanding sometimes it's better sometimes it's worse but um and that's because we're taking digital audio from the uh from the hdmi which it actually wasn't designed for um the hd of the the port the that the sound is coming from right now was only supposed to be for video but you can capture sound from it. so let's actually go ahead and Go to output settings and turn off enhanced DVI mode because we can still use the uh, the audio output, the regular analog output for uh, for sound, or we should still be able to. So let's see how that works. And all I'm doing at this point is connecting. Uh, this, I actually have a better S-Video cable to use. What am I doing with my life? Silly me. Uh, this cable is specifically to be used with, um, N64, but it's the same, it's the same sort of cable for both N64 and GameCube. So I will be using that. And this is like the highest quality you can get from the N64. And I'm not just trying to like sell you fool's gold or anything. There is a market difference, but let's, uh, I'll talk about that in some other video some other day.
All right, so if you're not hearing any sound, that's specifically because I turned it off on the GameCube. Because what we are going to do is mess up our picture. Wow, okay. No, that's because I accidentally unplugged the red from the... Uh... Interesting that the... Uh... That unplugging the red like makes the, the, the green a little messed up. But what I'm trying to unplug is the two audio things. That shouldn't have happened, but it's fine. But I can replug these in. Oh, much better, honestly. I don't know, I think it just sounds better. Yeah, I think that that'll do it. Um, yeah, so that's as good as that gets. So if you wanted do the retro tank five eyes. Let's do when you get to do three different He wanted to do uh, the the guy that I spoke to wanted to do three different um, resolutions, and those are going to be 1080 under, which is a perfect two times scale. A uh, perfect two times scale of the GameCube resolution, and finally 1080 over. Oh, 1080 over makes it slightly larger. I forgot about that. So let's reset this. And this is, uh, so this is 1080 over. This is not, you're supposed to, it's going to crop out the top and the bottom a little bit, and you can actually, uh, we set the vertical positioning of it so that it gets a little bit uh, within the frame better. Like, as you can see, I'm cropping out a lot, but... I'm cropping out a lot, but the stuff that it's cropping out is actually not that important. So, top is 34, and... I should be writing this down somewhere, and I'm not. To get some paper and a pen. Are there any other settings that I really need to worry about? Interlace anything here. Generic is fine. And I think the only things are generic and 4x3, so we can leave it at that. You guys want to see some cool scan lines? If you want to see cool scan lines, you should be, um, you should really try to full screen this. It's not going to look right on stream. divided by 2 should be 10. So this looks like it is, this is the perfect center for this game. Kimpa Slice, does Take do Optical Timing for GameCube DTV AB? So it actually does. Thank you for coming in and thank you for the question, by the way. Um, I appreciate you coming in. So, um, I'm in horizontal sampling and I will tell you, I personally, yeah, thanks for the stream, no worries. 
Um, I personally do not see a difference between... Let me see if it's in... Oh, it's currently in 1080 over, so it's not going to do um, DTV AB on 1080 over. So let me change it to 1080 under. All right. And in 1080 under, it's currently not centered. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's in 1080 under, but ten also, you, I don't know if you see the stuff on the top, but uh, this is one of the reasons why we don't try to move it around too much for 1080 under, but otherwise it's fine. Yeah, and it's perfectly centered in the image. Um, so in 1080 under, it does do 1080 uh, 4x3 A and B, but in... So, I don't know if you know how the 5... Uh, you're probably KBATS from uh, the Tank 5X uh, Discord, but if, you, if you're if you not, welcome. Um, but the generic 4x3 actually does double the sampling size of DTV 858. So there's actually no difference between 858A, B, and generic 4x3. It just shifts this image to the left or right a little bit depending on which of the three you're in. I honestly see zero difference personally, um, especially because, again, generic 4x3 is a perfect double of the sampling size for those things. So that's that's personally what I see. In 1080 over, you can only use generic 4x3, which is fine because um, you don't... Uh, Sorry, you don't get that. You don't need to do anything because you know it's perfect anyway. But again, it's only generic four by three, and it's an uneven scale. But and if you full screen this, and this is my favorite part about the perfect upscales, the perfect integer upscale, and that is uh, that you get a perfect LCD scanline effect. It's making the image very, very, uh, <laughs> very, very dark. If you're looking at it through stream with a weird, uh, and if you're looking at it not full screen, it's gonna look not great but you know we can put it in hdr and if it's in full screen you should be able to see a slightly better uh or a slightly brighter image at the very least i'm doing this on my non-hdr screen i don't know exactly how this will look on stream so you know like i said just turn it off and i'll go ahead and turn uh this off as well so it looks perfect um, let me see if I took a screenshot for 1080 over, and if I did, no, I did not. Okay, so we can do that. So we can do that, and then, uh, so it's already centered. And the last thing is taking a screenshot for the wiki. All right, cool. So I got generic through the, I did generic through the HDMI directly. I did 1080 over, 1080 under, 1080 fill. So that pretty much solves everything. Um, the only thing that's really left is I do have this uh, HDMI adapter, but a lot of people may not be able to use that for their GameCube. And probably the easiest way to get good uh, video out of your GameCube is to simply just use an S-Video cable. So I'm going to show off what that looks like now. But on the S video cable, I'm probably just going to do a simple. Oh, oh, snap. I did not mean to do that. I think I turned on. Uh... I think I turned on component output. So, whoops. I'm going to put that to no.
And here's the thing, the, the, the resolution for GameCube is not going to be as good as it can be, but the, um, through S-Video, and that's okay. I'm sure everything does look great on your phone. Like, GameCube, GameCube is very, very, is very, very good looking. Just very curious to see what this sort of looks like in S-Video. It looks fine, I will say. Let's, uh... It's probably in... Oh, it's an over. I guess the question is going to be whether it looked good in high resolution... Uh, in either of the high resolutions, or if we just use 4x3. But it looks like for all three of them, it's the same. Let's get to the same place we were before. And yeah, you never need to worry about S-Video, um, because S-Video is usually very sharp. It's just that everyone gets really frustrated with the EQ. Sorry, everyone just gets really frustrated with GameCube because um, the GameCube has component cables available for it, but those component cables are $300, so everyone is trying to do as much as they can to make sure that they get the right cables and the right and everything that, as it should be. Like getting getting their game into look nice, essentially. Faster than uh, rolling is faster than walking. This is a golf game. Let's see what this looked like before. I'm going to try to match it up with where I was. And I'm going to leave it in 1080 fill because, um, just to show, like, what this could look like. Especially because, like, so here, this will be what it looks like in 1080 under mode, which is, again, is a perfect two times scale. This is what it looks like. It looks great on this video. It's just not as sharp as it could be. But that's fine. And if I put it on 1080 over, it won't be an even upscale anyway. So that's not, it doesn't entirely matter either way. All right. Um, and I will say, I think in 1080 fill, it actually takes up a little bit more of the, uh, the vertical and the vertical resolution. So... Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at this and I'm making sure that this is as sharp as it can be. I'm currently not seeing any difference between the two high resolution modes or 4x3, but I'm going to like look really close with this, uh, with my loop. Okay, so yeah, it, you can leave it in generic 4x3. The only other thing now is, um, do I need to... Okay, so you can also just leave this on... Okay, so your vertical position does mean one. Okay. 
that's fine. Everything looks good on this on this part. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the screenshot. And um Hmm. Yeah, at this point I think we're good. I wonder if I have what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh see if I have Wind Waker and oh I have the desk it'll apply it so if you don't know there is homebrew that you can run on your GameCube you just need like a very special memory card to do that and I'll show you guys and if you've seen me play uh oh this is not the right thing at all oh this is not the hack Sorry, wrong memory card. So if you see me play Game Boy games on the uh, on the GameCube, then you'll know that like I have to do this to play it because I'm not paying two hundred dollars for the disc to play GameCube games on. I don't know if you guys know about that, but if you uh, if you want to play Game Boy games and do it officially using only official software, it costs absorbent amount of money, and you don't want to do that. So I use, I personally just use homebrew to, uh, is this going to work? Oh, right. Not S video. Oops. There you go. Sorry about all that. Do I have the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker here? I don't. So this GameCube was specifically going to be used for playing uh, multiplayer games. So that's all that's here. But that's okay. I have the disc. I already have the disc in it. All I need to do is load up a new version of Swiss. Like I said, this is homebrew. It lets you play... Um, <laughs> Kimba Kimba Splice says crazy. A used Game Boy uh Game Boy player with the CD was $19. Well, now it's gonna cost you 200 That disc is very rare. It seems like everyone lost track of it, which is why it's really good to be able to use homebrew. And the homebrew works better than uh the homebrew works better than uh the actual software and it lets you do a ton of different things but today is not the focus of that especially because the retro tank 5x wiki already has a ton of documentation on what to do with it you just load up the right version of game boy interface which is what the homebrew is called combine it with the 5x and you get picture perfect uh oh is this just gonna oh no it's gonna do that okay and what it does immediately is it uh, gives you like a picture perfect 1080p. Sorry, a uh, picture perfect 1080p uh, look to it. So according to the guy who made this homebrew, um, there is no anti-flicker filter or anything that needs to be done. All I need to do is load the game. So let's hope that's the case. Like everything is set and it should look sharper to begin with. So let's do that. And this is specifically because um, I'm taking this again, like the same set of pictures again, specifically because um, part of the, the part of the community for the Tank 5X is we want to get the utmost pristine picture out of our out of everything that we're doing let me first check oh no i did the wrong thing Ugh, big dummy move of me okay i got this i did things i did things the wrong way oh boy yeah it's super duper frozen now that's fine sorry about that guys we want to get the utmost picture out of it and like Using the stock experience is fine, but we can take it even further. 
Um, so I'm very excited to be able to contribute to something like that. Oh, I didn't need to do that, but whatever. I don't need this memory card anymore, so let's do that and load up this memory card so we can load up the new Swiss. Great, and then we load up the disk. Yes, so um, Extrem said that it makes the game even sharper, and that's because there's a flick, there's an anti-flicker filter on these games, and failed to start up this file too fragmented. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, it probably didn't didn't spin correctly. All right, let's try this one more time. Sorry. Um, so when you play GameCube games, normally like through your original cables, it played in a in the 480i resolution. And the problem with the 480i resolution was um, that it flickers. Because of the way that it draws 480i, it'll flicker between frames. So Nintendo added an anti-flicker filter, which, um, yeah, the anti-flicker filter is there to um, help keep the image stable in 480i. But the problem is that they never, uh... there we go. The problem with the anti-flicker filter is that they did not turn it off for 480p because they thought that everyone would be playing sort of the same way. And that's unfortunately not the case. It really shouldn't be that way, but it is. So what Extremes did was he, let's hope that let's, hope that this this loads up the game right otherwise i'm a little screwed okay there it is perfect um what was i going to say yeah so he disables the filter and the game no longer does that and it is as sharp as can be on uh on the retro tank 5x so i'm going to go ahead and load up the game yeah, so that's the that's the big problem. They applied the flicker filter to the anti-flicker filter to 480p. They just never turned it off. Extremes did it for us. So using Homebrew, we get the sharpest experience possible. And like I literally asked them today, hey Extremes, what is the name of the flick of the anti-flicker filter setting on the on Swiss? And he said, Don't do that. Like just press A and load the game. So everything is as it should be. He said, just press A and start the game. I feel like this is a little darker. No, actually, it's exactly the way it should be. Great. All right, we are back to um, this scene again. Come on now, let me get out. Let me leave. There you go. Also, I will say, one of the things I love most about GameCube games is that when they were well optimized, there was never any loading times. And I don't know if that was like by design or just there's so little there's so little data to actually uh, deal with but hey it just always works I know what advance this is going to be the direction I need to make the wind blow anyway so
Game of Spice says the graphics in this game age like a fine wine. I completely agree. Um, the graphical style for this game is absolutely perfect. I, if it wasn't for the fact that the Wii U version has like quality of life improvements, I would just say that the Wii U version is a component or HDMI if you have the ability to do that, but not everyone can. So if you have the if you have a Wii U, just the Wii U version, it's fine. You know what? I will personally say that I don't see any need for an anti-flicker filter personally, but I also don't know what I'm looking for in that regard. But I will say the A button looks a little bit more sharp than it did before, so there is that. about here. Okay. Um, so this is a 1080 fill. Cropping should be at around 11, so it looks pretty centered. Done doing that. We're going to do 1080 over because we can. And like I said, in 1080 over, you crop the top and the bottom a little bit, but I think that looks great. Okay, it's still in the same settings as well. Um, I think it looks great in 1080 over with the crop things, specifically because, you know, the information's not necessary and it fills up more of the screen horizontally. And finally, 1080 under. I love that this keeps settings between... Uh, that this keeps settings between... Uh, between resolutions internally. So that I can just keep playing it this way. I think that actually does it for uh, Wind Waker, for the different resolutions and stuff. I just hope that like I did everything that I could regarding making the image as sharp as possible. I personally don't see a difference, but I also, again, I don't know what I'm looking for, but the image looks really sharp. And I think, do not quote me on this. Actually, I can just take a look at the previous screenshot. Okay, so that's there. And I think it actually... No, it doesn't really have to color. I'm just going to Oh, Extrems. Welcome, Extrems. Wow, you are... <laughs> Welcome. This is. I'm using your software. Um, do I? Since you're here, if I, if I may, like, I'm very honored that you're actually here. It's very cool that you are. So you say that the comb filter isn't enabled in this game to begin with. So, okay, I guess I'm... I, I'm glad that is the case. Welcome, Extrems, by the way. You are the coolest for making this stuff. Um, check out... Ch like I said, Google um, Swiss to check out loading, doing, getting the most out of your GameCube games with your Nintendo GameCube and official star hardware. Um, this is just, I just pressed A from Swiss to get it to look this way. Do you recommend that I do anything else? Because I think it looks fine this way, but you know better. Like, should anything else be, should anything else be employed? Are there any specific uh, resolutions that should be employed? I also don't have uh, enable. It, 
forcing horizontal scale one to one, but it'll break the aspect ratio. I think that's fine to do it that way. Um, yeah, so this stuff should be... Let me, and let me know, like, if I'm setting these correctly. So I have, like, the, uh, the Carby. Okay, perfect. Um, you know, let me know if RGB should be limited and if I should be using anything other than RGB full in this case. Actually, let me see if this makes it look any better. I very much doubt it. No, that's not correct. And that's definitely not correct. So we're just gonna... Set it back to RGB full and call it a day. Um, do you know? Because I want to test. I wanted to test and get um, something with anti flicker filter. I do have Mario Sunshine. Does Mario Sunshine have the anti flicker filter in it? So I can check that. Because that's the next game I'm gonna do. And it looks like today I'm only gonna be doing GameCube games. I'm probably. It's also off in there. Ooh. All right, I really need a good example, so let me get, get give me one second so I can get these games. Hi, by the way, this is what I look like. I apologize for the ugly one. I have a ton of GameCube games. These are my GameCube games. What is a very good example of the flicker filter, of the anti-flicker filter, so I can use that? Um, so yeah, any of these games will, should work. I don't want to use Tales of Symphonia, and I don't want to use Sonic Mega Collection um, for very generic, just plop the disc in example, only because... Um, only because those games don't get 480p natively. And I want to do a game that's native 480p just so that we're on the same page. It's like, hey, actually, yeah, no, that's fine. Because um, I do want to get S-Video, like a very generic S-Video picture. But I also want to get um, a game that makes sure that it has the flicker filter. Um, so I'm sorry to like really so like really like bug you about this stuff but i'm really happy you're here especially because if the anti-flicker filter was off in every game i was gonna try then there was no point in trying every single game so if it's in melee i'll go ahead and do that and i'll turn it on and off in melee actually my disc for melee is over here on my desk so i'll just go ahead and do that All right, back to, we're going to start Melee now. Um, K-Babs really wanted uh, Mario Sunshine because he said that that was a really good example of a GameCube game just to show because of the red. And it would be very good at showing the 422 stuff. But because obviously if Mario doesn't have the anti flicker filter, then there, there's no point in using that game, especially since I already have one. Why is my sound off? Well, that's weird. That's no bueno. It was also on a second ago, so there's no reason for it not to work. It could also be because the game froze slightly. Okay. 
actually going to turn the volume down just a bit so that I'm not getting drowned out by melee. Welcome, this is the melee corner. We are going to, uh... Oh, well, there it is, the deflicker filter, on and off. There you go. Melee has a manual flicker filter, so we're going to do that. And we're going to train. And I would love to use a uh, red character. Characters with red caps. So let's do that. Is there a training stage in melee? I forget. I think the best bet at a, at a training stage is probably one of these two so that we don't randomly just die from things. Hyrule Temple could work too. I just don't want to be in a stage where like things randomly fall, the stage goes up and down, things come after us, so... That's not even the right stage. Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Island. This is um, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island. Hi. Bye. All right, I think that's probably gonna be the best bet. This one is good. I wanna do, I wanna see some really good like red and green comparisons. All right, so right now the flicker filter is on. Um, do I want to be any closer than that? Huh. I think that's fine. That should be okay. Um, that is 1080 fill. Did I accidentally take a screenshot with the settings on it? I did not. Perfect. Okay. And his arm is up. That's 1080 over, and like I said, in 1080 over, I love it because the, uh... I love 1080 over because none of the important information is ever cropped off. The only issue with 1080 over, personally, is just that the, uh... It's, it's not an integer scale, so it'll never look perfect. It won't look as sharp as possible, but it's good enough. Especially if you want to use uh, LCD scan lines, but that's a different story for another day. I wouldn't use that on stream normally. I just wanted to see what that looked like in person. Um, so that is that. Um, I guess since we're cheating, we can just go ahead and hit. Uh, we don't need Swiss. We can just hit um, finish and go back, turn off the flicker filter, or turn it on, and take it. Take the pictures in those three resolutions. Oh, my discs. My disc is bad. That's not good. Jeez, we really started skipping and just went straight to the system to the to the. Startup menu. See how close Mario was in these pictures. Oh 
little further away. Okay. Oh, no, that's not what I want. All right, there's that one. Here's 1080 Bill. And 1080 over. And that takes care of melee for those uh, for the GameCube. That basically takes care of the GameCube. Flicker filter on, flicker filter off. Well, it's multiple resolutions, what it looks like directly from the HDMI. Everything is looking really good. I am, I did, uh, I am not using the official GameCube component cables, but I am using an HDMI to component converter. If you weren't if you weren't here for the beginning of the stream, and that is because the GameCube component cables are, in fact, over two over three hundred dollars in the United States. So if you want to try to save some money, get one of these. Uh, here, let me put my face back on. If you really want to save some money, get an HDMI adapter. Get um, the, the, the one that is most uh, community approved is Carby by Insurrection Industries. Um, and that is because these guys are like of the community and make things for the community. Obviously, they're a business, so I don't try to shill for them. But if you want to get other ones, there is the Retrobit uh, Prism HDMI and also the, uh, and also the Retrobit not retro, but the Eon GCHD Mark II, which also has some other features that are a little extra, but unfortunately they just don't work as well as I wish they did. So I got the Eon specifically because I can connect it to an optical audio, uh, optical audio receiver, sorry, DAC, a digital audio converter for sound so I can use them with my headphones. But unfortunately, um, it just, is this, is the top one one or is the bottom one one for, I'm setting up my Wii right now. Slot A is the top one. What was I saying? Yes, yeah, so the optical audio doesn't sound as great, especially because you're not, I don't want to say you're not supposed to use the uh, audio in that way, but, um, you know, the, the digital audio output from the GameCube is not exactly as it should be, um, especially compared to, the, uh, compared to the analog audio, from my understanding. Um, and I'm not going to ask Extremes to help me anymore, but if I, if I, I'm going to upload this later to YouTube, so if I am incorrect, I'm going to look this stuff, stuff up later. If I am incorrect, I will put that in YouTube, in the YouTube, that I, I say something about the audio, I was wrong. The correct like the the eon mark ii's audio is fine but i don't think it is so i can pretty confidently say like this is not the way it's supposed to work so right now i'm going to set up my gamecube um you can play gamecube games from the uh you can play gamecube games from the wii and the best part about the Wii is that it ha it currently, currently, like very, very much right now, this may not be the case if you see this video in the future or you try to buy them in the future, but these Wii component cables are readily available. Um, these are from HD Retrovision. They cost $30 from my understanding. That's what I paid at least when I bought them. Um, you pr probably buy them off Amazon, but I bought them from somewhere else. By the way, Kimba Slice and Super Spyro, thank you so much for the follows, guys. Um, I, have those, I have those off specifically, so if I'm recording video and they go off while I'm like recording Zelda video, that they don't uh, 
interrupt the stream or anything, because I do want to use this footage for, for later. But yeah, like I said, the um, GameCube, so these Wii component cables are great, easy to get, and it's, it makes for a very, very good alternative to playing GameCube games on your TV. The only reason you would want to use an HDMI adapter specifically is if like you if you already have a game my recommendations are if you already have a gamecube um go for one of the hdmi adapters especially if you want to try to use it with uh the Game Boy player but if you're already diving into the world of homebrew then you probably have everything you need to play gamecube and Game Boy games and wii games directly on a wii um let's plug this in Currently plugging in the power for the Wii. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is plug in this um, the sensor bar. And I think that is it. We can go ahead and turn the, the Wii on. I have not used the disk drive in my Wii for a very, very long time. So... I wonder my, why my uh, USB Loader GX is this color right now. It must be something... Oh, I switched red and blue in the component cables. That's bad. There you go. This is exactly what it should look like. And I'm pretty sure it is currently in 1080 over. So let's put it back to fill. And let's also... Turn the game on correctly. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is the, the Wii is hacked. However, um, 90, I'm 90% 90 sure that when you run uh, the game off the disc, it should work normally. I do need the Wiimote. So... Um, like I said, I have not used the uh, optical drive in my Wii for a very long time. Let's see if this actually works and reads the disc, because if not, you just have to load up the game some other way. And now I have to sort of step away. Oh, it loads. This is, this is great. Just step away from my Wii for a little bit to get this working. Okay, so it should work fine. Everything's plugged in. Um, I should be able to enable 480p mode. The answer is yes. Great. Kimba Slice says, you have been actively testing the Wii with your Tink 5X. Some of the force 480p, 480p fix and deflicker filter off. Frame buffer through USB loader looks uh, with frame buffer through USB loader looks very crisp. Yeah, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm testing today. Actually, I want I really want to get um, this stuff on the 5x wiki. I really I really just want to get some of this stuff on the 5x wikis so that everyone can see. Hey, this is as good as it can get i will i would not turn i mean it really depends if you want the sharpest picture possible then you know turn the frame buffer on or off with the deflicker stuff but um oh should i turn the flicker filter back on i'll take it later um, I was I was gonna say like you know I just want like a stock experience because they want to show on the 5x wiki what a stock image looks like and what it looks like as sharp and crisp as possible. So let's take a look at what that could look like. Here is this is actually the same as a GameCube, so I shouldn't have to switch anything around. 
right there is Bill. There was over. There's under. So we're just gonna run through this because I. It's gonna work. Yes, it does. Oh. Okay, so it does turn it on. Under her. There's over. And here's Phil. Okay. So that should pretty much give me exactly what I'm looking for with both of them. Let's turn on the Wii and use homebrew. Let's see if we reset this. Oh, if we reset this, it goes back into the GameCube game. Okay. That is fine. We're working here. We're working here. We're, we're zooming through GameCube games. And I think I said this before, but the um, there's not really a. I personally did not see a difference between uh, 480p uh, the different sampling modes. If you're familiar with the Tank 5x, so it, everything looked really good. And the three sampling modes you should be using, which are usually four by three. Um, let's see if Zelda is here oh smash is definitely here is wind waker here wind waker is not here i think Let's see if it's under l for legend of zelda Ooh, i have ogre battle i can play that at some point mad world kirby okay so i don't have zelda wind waker here which is fine i can load that through this with the fixes All right, so when we load the game, um, we want to go down to the Nintendo Don't settings. So, Force 480p 60, Progressive Patch, Video Deflicker on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off. Uh, use Global Progressive Patch. Use Global. I don't want to force widescreen. Video deflicker on. Wii U widescreen video scale. I'm going to go ahead and use global. I think that's it for this. Yeah, there is no frame buffer option for this, and that's okay. So I do definitely have the deflicker on. Let's see if the deflicker. Up, oh, some exception occurred. Oh, you know why? Big dummy move of me. No, I have it here, so it should have just loaded it straight from the. That's a little weird. I just saw that I have my. Uh my usb drive plugged in so it should work let's take a look and see what the problem might have been then so i have nintendo here 
Let's see if I can load this. So Nintendo works. Sorry, I'm just doing a little bit of, um... A little bit of detective work because it didn't want to work previously, but I'm going to see if I can get it to work now. And if not, I can always just get it to load straight from the disk, so. Let's see how long it takes to do that. Okay, so it is smash, game load. Nintendo uh, video mode. I'll use, you know what, I'll just use global because I can just press. I can just hold the B button to force 480p. GameCube controller. This should be it. Let's start it again. Um, it says it has an exception error again. That's unfortunate. I guess I need to do... Um, I just need to find out why it is that this is happening. Because it did load GameCube games in the past. Like, I've been able to play GameCube games before. And I did just play it on uh, Nintendo, so... Let's actually see what this looks like again. Because if I can set the settings directly in Nintendo, then that's fine. Force progressive. Force the flicker. Okay, so we can change the width. I'm going to change that to auto. Well, that should be it. Let's see if we can load this up again. So the deflicker is on now. I am using, oh, you're right, actually, shit. I just, real, I just realized that I'm not using that right, ver, the right version of it. So thank you for that, actually. Okay, for, oh, there it is. Enable progressive display, yes. It feels a little darker. Let's just see one specific thing because... Okay, so the anti-flicker filter, like I'm changing it and it doesn't actually change anything in the video. So it's, it's fine. 
Unless it's actually it's in Force the Flicker right now. So there is that. Okay. So it, it, the Flicker is on. Let me actually load the newer version of uh, USB Loader GX. I should have both of them here. It just uh, it should it just normally auto loads to. Um, Nintendo also has a newer build. Oh, then I'm going to have to go back and try this another time then because um, I have the newest version of GC Loader, uh, USB Loader GX, but I don't have, I don't know which one is which, so I'm going to say it's this one. Yes, it's this one. If there's a new version of Nintendo, then I'm going to have to test that off stream or go ahead and try this for another stream because um, <laughs> because I don't have a good version to show you guys. Wii games, GameCube games, NAND channels, and MU NAND channels. And... Oh, I don't want that. I want this. No. Why? Can't create directory. Okay. Yeah. You know what the, the reason for this issue is specifically that my SD card, um, my SD card has the little switch, the little latch in it broken. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to probably just call it quits here. Specifically because um, I'm gonna have to get back, fix that on my SD card so I can uh, do, so I can load that. And also I'm gonna need to load newer versions of Nintendo on it as well. Let's see, let's put my face here. Hi everyone, it's me, Carl. It's me, Mr. Morrow. So yeah, I think that's it for today. I can't because um, I don't wanna go too long at once i just like took a very long time setting up all this gamecube stuff and i don't want to mess around with the the wii stuff at the moment if i can't get the like utmost picture out of it especially because there's a new version of nintendo and i have currently have this new version of usb loader gx installed i just can't um i just can't use the use it without messing around too much with my sd card However, someone did tell me, so I, from my understanding, there is no way to read Wii games from the SD card in USB loader. Which is, which is a little bit unfortunate because I have a, I would love to have a bunch of games on the SD card, SD card mode on and off. So it just looks like this just tells it where to look for games, and I don't want to do SD card because I don't really have any games there. Mount USB at launch, yes. So it can read, uh, Kimba, Spli Kimba Splice says it reads from the SD card. Um, what is the setting for that? I would love to know. <laughs> is that here, the SD card mode? I would love, I would love to know that I have, a, like I said, I have a bunch of games on. Uh, yeah, go into loader. Is it here? Or, let me see if there's any other loader. No, it should be here. And let's find out. We are also going to turn off the deflicker filter. 40p pixel patch is on by default. The default under settings loader us use sd let me see if i find that again hard drive settings i'm assuming
Okay, I'm in, I am in SD card mode. And I'm assuming it's SD, I'm assuming it's SD card mode because that's the only thing here. Yep, okay, perfect. So here's the question, does this Let's take a look. It's a, it's a little bit more difficult only because um Zelda Ocarina, We Shop Channel, Wario's Woods, Legend of Zelda, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Photoshop Channel, Fantasy Star, Ogre Battle, Ninja Turtles. These are all games that are currently installed on my... on the regular Wii channel, not the SD card. Wonder if I have to do this. So for example, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna go back into the... Uh... Oh, I'm not even showing the game. Silly me. Sorry about that, that's annoying. So all of the games that I just saw were here on the, uh, come on. There it is. We're already here. And I'm looking for, for example, this is an example. Um, I guess Pokemon Puzzle League is one of the games that's here on the SD card. Yeah, so like Mega Man, Ogre Battle 64, um, Pokemon Puzzle League. Some Mega Man games, Chrono Trigger is on both, actually. Um, and East. Like East. Just games like this. Pokemon Snap is another one. What is this? Star Fox? And if this were the case, I would just go ahead and. Um... Oh, channels. I want. I'd just go ahead and install all the games on the SD card and use them there because I would love to use uh, virtual console games. Let's use the second one. Yes, this is one. Oh yeah, so that's it could do that before, um, from my understanding, but I was very specifically looking for um virtual console and we and the uh, WiiWare games, but it's I'll move them back and forth as I need to. It's just a little a little buns that like I can't do what I need. I, I can't just have them all on the SD card because they take relatively little space. So, uh, just so you guys know, like here's my, here's my SD card. And as you can see, it's in the lock position currently. Let's see if this even tries to, tries to do this. I guess not. It's in the lock position and I have to unlock it, but I have to be very, very careful in particular about how I put this back in here. So it's a whole trip. Let's see if this works this time. And this doesn't work here, I'll tell you that much. It's probably messed up because I took the SD card out. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of it for now. Um, thank you everyone to, who came. Like, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and download Nintendo off stream. I don't wanna download while I upload or anything. So I don't wanna mess anything up while I'm streaming or anything. So I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and sort of end the stream here. Thank you to everyone who came through. Thank you, Kimba Slice. Thank you, Extremes. Like, very honored, very, uh, I, like, just, I don't know what else to say. Like, just Extremes comes through and drops the knowledge. Okay, so I think the, yeah, the SD card situation is not great. 
It could also just be because I uh, don't have... No, that's probably not it. It's. I was going to say I don't have it connected to the internet, but that's fine. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for tuning in, checking in. Thank you uh, to everyone who came through. Um, I'm Mr. Morrow Streams, and I you know, do retro games. And tonight I was contributing to the Retro Tink 5X community by, you know, getting some screenshots and footage for using the Retro Tank 5X through the GameCube as well as the Wii playing GameCube games. So I think that kind of does it. You guys got a pretty good idea of what these sorts of things can look like. Um, who is streaming? Okay. The question is, are you guys into Fortnite or are you guys into Pokemon Unite? I don't know too many retro game streamers at this point. Um, I do know a few, but I would rather send you guys over to someone in my personal community. Oh yeah, Kimba, like don't worry about it. I it's something that it's it gives me something to do and it helps me create content. Like I I'm getting stuff for I'm getting stuff out of this as well. Um, so don't get it don't get it too twisted. Um, you know, uh, I scratch the retro tanks community and they all hopefully scratch a little bit of mine. You guys have come through from the Retro Tank community, so it's been great seeing you. And yeah, like I, uh, I think next time I'm gonna try to finish up the the GameCube stuff. I'm gonna have to tape my SD card down, um, so that I the so that the lock doesn't engage on the SD card. And I'm also going to download the newest version of Nintendo, so I can start using that right away and making sure that all of my games have art and stuff. Uh, but you know, that's it for this one. If you guys want to check out other stuff that I'm making, go ahead and check me out at Mr. Morrow Streams on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, wherever I do. I am going to try to get back to making uh, content for those uh, for for those channels, as well as refining this video into a YouTube video once I finish making the other stuff. So today is Thursday. I'm probably going to come back on Sunday, same time, eight o'clock. Uh, Eastern time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and that way you can see me and see me mess up this this whole uh, situation with the GameCube and the Wii, but also getting as good uh, as good a set of screenshots as possible on the Retro Tank 5X. But otherwise, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and raid my friend the Razor. Let's see if I can. Oh. All right, let's see what his channel is. It's the underscore Razor. Guys, say hello to the Razor for me. Um, if you are going to, if you're sticking around and if you guys are sticking around and can already subscribe to me, you can put a raid message that says, Your Moro is served. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and post it here. Oh. If you're not subscribed to me, I will, one, two, three, four, five, I will go ahead and give you the other one to use. Use that message and otherwise say hello to him. He's playing Pokemon Unite. He is trying to climb up the ranks and stay up the ranks. If you see me, if you see me on the Switch, if you have me on the Switch added as a friend, um, you'll see me playing Pokemon competitively instead of trying to make more context, content for the 5X. But Sunday, I'll probably come back to the, uh, to the 5X content so I can finish up GameCube on the Wii and then do actual Wii games and see what those look like with the flicker filter on off and the the crazy setting. Oh. 